Hi everyone, so I am currently uh, viewing my Paladin midrange deck. Paladin midrange has sort of slipped under the radar as a deck. It's um, it's a little bit, it's closer to Paladin control I would say than, well it's definitely closer to Paladin control than Paladin aggro, which is uh, called Shockadin I think right now. But the idea behind Paladin midrange is that the majority of your um, creatures focus around the, the four to six slot, or at least that's where your power comes from. Not so much controlling the board or keeping the board clear until the late game and dropping a bunch of legendaries. This is more about um, winning through the mid game or getting a strong footing in the mid game. And this is generally the type of deck I like to play. It's got a lot of combos in it, and they aren't game winning combos in the same way Miracle Rogue is game winning, but. They're very interesting combos, and that's why I like this deck. Now, people say Paladin is the worst class out there right now, and I would probably agree with that statement. But, um, I, I know I started, started off the season playing Miracle Rogue, and I rose up to rank 12 playing uh, what is considered the top deck. But, Miracle Rogue, um, in many ways, it... it it's a very complex deck, and it's it's a combo deck. Um, you're, I don't know, it doesn't feel like I'm playing the game, to be honest. It's more like I'm racing to get to a combo finish. It's more like they started the game at around 10 to 12 life, and I'm just looking for the combo pieces to finish the game. And the 10 to 12 damage that I need to do beforehand um, is just sort of like... That's the game I'm playing. I'm figuring out how to do the 10 to 12 damage to get them within combo range while simultaneously looking for my combo. And that's nice. And it is it is the best deck because of its raw power and the fact that it, it has a single game plan that it just straight... I mean, it powers through its own deck. It, it draws tons and tons of cards. And the goal is to just get to its combo finish every game and and just kill the opponent. There's nothing wrong with that. If you want to be competitive, that's what you want to do. You want to have the most consistent, most powerful deck. And while Warlock is probably the more consistent deck, the power of Miracle Rogue is just so much higher than Warlock because Miracle Rogue can win out of nowhere. But that kind of deck, um, pretty much, you know, you're doing the same thing over and over. If that's how you want to grind the ladder, that's probably the fastest way to grind. But I'm not really in a rush to to grind the ladder. I do hope to hit legend. I may not make it to legend. I didn't make it to legend last time. I only made it to uh, like rank one, even though the the highest video I uploaded was like rank three. And so I want to talk about the uh, Paladin mid range deck. So there are no one drops, at least not in my version. Um, I didn't feel like one drops actually did anything. Not even the Argent Squire. Um, I wasn't really happy with it. One thing Paladin lacks is sufficient card draw. Now, Shockadin gets around this because it plays, um, what is it? Is it Divine Favor? It is Divine Favor. So this card. The problem with Divine Favor is it doesn't specify how many you draw. Like, it doesn't give you a hard number in the same sense that Thought Steel is always a three mana for two cards, or that Arcane Intellect is three mana for two cards. Or even better for priests, you know, you've got that crazy Northshire cleric and circle of healing combo that can draw you like four to maybe six cards uh, on a good day. And that's the issue. Um, if you're playing against like another aggro deck as Shakadin, if you, your divine favors are probably just sitting in your hand, and you're just like, I can't play this divine favor because my opponent has the same number of cards in hand as I do. Um, and so that's why I don't run Divine Favor in this deck, although uh, it's something I think Aggro Paladin has to run and doesn't really have a good way around. So and the card draw here is Lou Hoarders. Um, these double as sort of early fodder for uh, aggressive decks, um, but they also double as card draw. That's on a body. And... Miracle Rogue has really taught me the power of Loot Hoarder. Um, you know, you, you play the Loot Hoarder oftentimes not because you want two damage, but because it's two damage plus draw a card. 
The other one is Acolyte of Pain. Um, Acolyte of Pain is, is a card I'm not really a, a huge fan of a lot of the times. Um, if you don't get it, if you don't get it at like the right time, or you, oftentimes you can't even play it until the board is clear or until, until you get a good situation set up. Uh, so it's inconsistent card draw. Um, and then the most important card draw card is Lay on Hands. Uh, it does cost 8 mana, so it's pretty prohibitive, but in the current aggro heavy meta, gaining 8 life and drawing 3 cards is pretty game breaking because it often means that the aggro deck can't finish you in time for you to get back in the game. Um, and so I really like Lay on Hands. Now you'll notice Tyrion isn't in the deck. Um, and part of the reason is because I think Tyrion is slow because it, it is a 8 mana 6-6 six, six with Divine Shield and Taunt. And the death rattle is pretty insane. I mean, you a 5-3 weapon is basically 15 damage that you can distribute however you want. But the problem is for 8 mana, um, it, it doesn't... If it's dealt with, then you've lost the majority of the value. So if it gets silenced, then you play the 8 mana 6-6. Six, six. And while the argument is not strong here, because that argument goes for any type of removal, like, you know, all removal kills creatures, so, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean you don't play minions. But Ragnaros is 8 mana guaranteed at least 8 damage on something. Well, on an enemy. So even if it's dealt with, you've still done something. It's, it was still impactful. Um, another ring is another reason is if you're playing against priest, um, the priest matchup is already pretty bad. If they mind control your Tyrion, uh, you don't really have a silence, and so you're gonna give them the five three Ashbringer, and that could be game. That that's pretty huge. Um, if they mind control your Tyrion. So, uh, there are two legendaries in this deck. Um, one is the Black Knight, uh, because six mana for essentially a chill wind yeti that destroys an enemy minion is very strong. Uh, the other is Ragnaros for, for reasons I previously stated. Um, the rest of the deck, uh, I can't really explain it. It's more or less something. I started off with a sort of aggro palais build, and I played a bunch of games. If you were watching my Miracle Rogue video series, then you know I'm currently ranked 12. Um, the funny thing is, I actually dropped after switching to Paladin, or I was experimenting with Paladin a little bit. I dropped to rank um, 16, and then. Every time I lost, I tried to evaluate some of the cards in my deck, and then I thought about, you know, what I could have changed and what could have been different. And so I was able to eventually settle on a list that got me back up to rank 12, and I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm going to play uh, a couple games. I'm not going to do this based on rank anymore, um, although I will indicate it in the video title. I'm going to do this based on video count because if I do it based on rank I, you know it could be take me two hours to climb one rank if it's a bad day. Versus Uther. So this one I will fight with honor. Justice this won't demands be retribution of what you're gonna see in the letter because people don't really play Paladin. Um I know it's rank twelve, it's not that's not really high, but people don't play Paladin. Uh, at least a lot of people don't. Um and so, this is probably not going to be a common occurrence, but if it is Paladin, it's probably going to be Shockaden. Um, so I'm going to ship anything that's high. Anything costs 4 or higher. Um, getting the Consecration is actually pretty good if he's an aggressive Sword of Justice. Yeah, so I could be going a little deep on the Sword of Justice here, but I think if you watch this game... You'll be quite impressed by what this sort of justice is capable of doing. Since I have two Sunfire Protectors, um, I'm gonna go ahead and drop one because yeah, it's pressure. It's better than a 1-1 in play. 
like by far because if he drops like an argent or a reporting for duty huh, okay so he didn't drop an argent square but i'm gonna play sword of justice for justice face it i got this and i'm gonna face him the thing you remember with the sword of justice is that it's it's not just a weapon with an ability uh it is a weapon still like never forget that it's still a weapon okay that's fine so he's gonna if he plays that um i think i'm just gonna follow the rule Another thing to uh, keep in mind when playing this deck is that you also have True Silver Champion, and a lot of times it's better to just sack the Sword of Justice and play this True Silver Champion um, to, to even out the board state. He's probably gonna hit Lord Peacekeeper. He's gonna take a lot of damage. So anything I play from now on is gonna be pretty big. I think I like I got this. Yeah, so with the Sword of Justice, the Chilwin Yeti becomes a 4 mana 5 6, which is very, very strong. So, there we go. Sword of He's kind of had to do that. Not really the best. So we have an opportunity here to clear his board. Basically I would ram this into the Chilwin Yeti and then I could have Venging Wrath. And that should clear the board. Let me think. I think I like that plan. Um, or at least this is what I'm going to do for sure. I could Consecrate instead, but that only kills one of them. No, I think it's got to be the Venging Wrath. The resulting board state is me having a 5 5. Basically. That's better than him having a 3 1. That could uh, deal significant damage to my Chill Win Yeti. So he's way behind, like, on tempo. That was a very good estate Swamp Boost, though. Um, if he didn't have that, then I, I mean, things were going to go crazy. It's very hard for him to play anything into this. Like to play with fire? My shield for Argus! I think I'm gonna fire None my shield. So the board state isn't looking very good for him right now. One shot, one. Reporting for duty. Okay, so here I'm gonna play. Mind if I roll knee? Tandingo! Yes! Since I do have a taunt, I'm just gonna. Reporting I'm for invincible. duty. What we do is we clear his board. Reporting for I'm invincible. We have a lay on hand, so we're gonna be able to refresh. He's most likely gonna spend this turn rebuilding his board. 
and then we're just going to reporting for duty. I don't like the light, Paladin. I don't think it. I don't think the it battle. really is impactful. I did the uh, attack first because I'm pretty sure I was going to do that no matter what I drew. But before I attack this time. It's important to draw cards and figure Mind out what, if I roll what you're going to hit. <laughs> I'm I'm in back, so I gotta make sure I'm drawing more cards than him. He's currently 60 cards, 16 cards left in the deck and I'm at 13, so I should have the advantage here. What I don't think he can win. Yet? Reporting for duty. Of course, the irony here is that even though these guys have only one health, like he's, he's unable to actually deal with it. Uh, I think I win here with equality, avenging wrath, and then tax. I'm invincible. Hey, give me that. <laughs> victory. Is well played. Well, like I said, uh, you're probably not going to face another Paladin on ladder, or they're just going to be very few, but I would prepare for the uh, aggro Paladin build. And I know the Sword of Justice might be a little cute there, but you saw how much work that Sword of Justice did. Um, it made my Chilinity far superior to his. And it also Who's lasts that? like forever. Versus Gul'dan! Your soul shall be mine! I will fight with honor! So... Um... When playing against Warlock, you want to look at what he... Uh, you want to just automatically assume that he's going to be aggro. At least that's what I would say. You can also look at like how he mulligans. Because um, theoretically... The aggro warlock. I don't know, actually. I know there's some way to tell based on the mulligan or have a good idea, but uh, I think what we do here is we're going to keep one consecration in case we need it. We're going to ship everything else. Because um, as good as the true silver champion is, we actually want um, earlier plays. I like having the coin with Wildfire Master. That's really nice. Why do you definitely strong I'd say. Um, I can't kill anything with wall pyromancer into this. Reporting for duty. We must cleanse the Sunwell. So, hmm, it's interesting. I think what we're going to do is the we're going to cut down. We're going to cut this thing to the highest. And we're going to pass. <laughs> it's time for a little blood. Tadingo! Yeah. Next turn we can uh, Wild Pyromancer coin into Consecration. And that should completely wipe the board. Who dares summon me? Our opinion hasn't been the strongest. Do you like to 
Should be good from there. The light protects me. Glory to the Sindora. So. Follow the rule. Shields up. Taunts are definitely what we need here. My shield for Argus! Just so many things here, but you know, just gotta hope. to Northrend. Well played. Yeah. Well. Based played. on what I drew. No! At least my opening hand. Uh, against that girl. But this deck is not super weak to Zoo, from my experience. Um. It has the same weaknesses all other decks have against Zoo, and that is, even if you're teched for Zoo, even if you're ready for it, if you just don't see the cards, then you're not going to be able to beat Zoo. But it also depends on Zoo getting a pretty strong start, like he did. And so, I mean, you just, you just do your best, you know, hope you get good draws, because really what we need was a single equality. Your soul shall be mine! I will fight with honor. In a ship. Huh. I'm actually going to ship the Consecration this time. Because it's a little slow and not quite... This is exactly what we want to see. This right here. Now if he's handlock, um, then we have more time. And I'm hoping he isn't handlock. Yeah. That matchup is matchup is a little better than the handlock matchup. Why do you go? Oh. Mind if I roll me. The next turn I think Sword of Justice into Equality Pyromancer is probably good. So my goal here is for him to, um, we're taking 4, we're going to go to 22, my goal here is for him to just unload onto the board, because if he does that, then we're going to wipe his board. <laughs> Need a this is a good start. Do you like to play with fire? Your soul shall suffer. And then from this point on, we can play a uh, four mana <laughs> six taunt. Should be pretty good. Tadingo, for justice. It makes it harder for him to bust through this. Or makes it so he can't soul fire, um, hit with one, and then hit us in the face anyway. <laughs> I 
So, with the Sword of Justice, even the old Murkai, um, with one of the Murloc can't bust through this. Or both these can't bust through it unless he does a soul fire. And hit us for two. I'm fine with that. is good without wasting the sword of justice. Yeah, but he still can't punch through this though. And that's the awkward thing for him. So when we do this turn, I'm going to Avenging Wrath to see what I can get. And then hopefully it does enough damage to the old Murkai that I can take it out uh, without having to use two attacks. So it didn't, so I'm going to do it. Perfect for us. For justice! I got this. Offset the life balance, and we're also representing lethal next turn if he can't kill both of our creatures. I think in game two, I just uh, I should have sh shipped this consecration back, and that was really my mistake. So it's something I'll keep in mind for the future. Because consecration really does feel slow against Zoo, because um, the two health is not an issue for Zoo. You gotta be able to get past three health, before. especially with the Mani Berserker. Uther versus Jaina. You asked for it. I will fight with honor. Quality. Um, that might be a mistake though, but we'll see. This is very much a tempo matchup. Because the way Mage operates is if it gets the first minion, you can start dumpstering your board. Or dumpstering your Shield minions. Up. So, like, it plays a minion and then you play a minion to counter, but since Mage is just loaded up with like removal spells, they just blow up your minion and then hit you with their minion. And you're constantly like behind and so I'm gonna coin. I'm gonna start with a coin against them. That's pretty good. I got this. Shields up.
We just need to win the tempo race, really. We do have a quality consecration coming later. This is definitely a great, um, sort of slow play by him. Of course. <laughs> yeah, job done. Yeah, we very much want to be the aggressor in this matchup if we can, because once you get behind the tempo against Mage, um, they just burn out. It's pretty bad from there. So this is a little tricky. I, I can't let that stay there, so I'm thinking I'm just gonna <laughs> so, even though he's just gonna of course. Yeah, he's just gonna be a but it's fine. Mind if I roll need? Flame strike range now, though. Well, the flame strike against this board is not particularly Someday impressive. Someday I'll be just like you. drawn three more cards total than we have uh no actually two it'll be two in our turn but I'm glad to see the most here instead of on something probably more significant <laughs> Reporting for duty. Ice block. I think it is ice block, actually. So it's important that we watch our health. So I would assume it is Ice Block. Or Burn Mage. Reporting for duty. This would probably be a good, um, good flame strike here. <laughs> yeah, we need to really watch our health. I think we we'll to use the It's gotta be running out of spells though. Okay, there we go. There's the draw. 
So he's still uh, three cards deeper than we are. <laughs> if he kills a chill win yeti, then we're going to have to do a wild pyromancer. <laughs> Guardian of Kings here soon. here. I think I'm running out of hard drive space, so I'm going to go ahead and edit.